I think my last three albums have been like summarizing and contextualizing, leaving home and social and romantic aspects of that part of life, you know? And now it's time to grow up, move on, mm. which will be cool. All right, I'm just gonna yeah. lay this down in the water. Go ahead. You're carrying this fish, you know, the fish is out of water. When was the last time you felt like a fish out of water? Oh man, that's a good question. I guess right now, I'm not, mm. I, this is my first video interview, so. Wow. Kind of nervous. No, I'm just oh kidding. It's fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Shit. Right yeah. now. No, but I feel good. Yeah. What's your favorite cut on the album and why? Ooh. Maybe it's like cliche to pick a favorite, but I do. It's Koala. That's like, it's in my top three that I've done. It was kind of created on a pretty trivial day in my life. I don't know, I was really, really sad when I made that. Mm. And I think a thing I like a lot about music is like in real life, I'm very all over the place, super ADHD. And I was able to like in music as a whole, create the piece I'm trying to build in myself. And that song mm. really feels like that piece that I've been looking to make for a long time. It is a nice ass, Damn, tranquil ass song. Heavy as hell, I didn't mean wow. that. Oh my gosh. There was a fish for the visualizer of koala, right? That was mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, yeah, going around and shit. Is that the fish you picture, you know, when, when thinking of fish as an album or is it not a specific fish? It's just like any fish. It's, the, it's me mainly. But You're the fish. Yeah, mm. but shout out to my good friend, Nora Snyder. Mm. who animated that and she's gonna have an adult swim show one day whether she believes that or not she's amazing brilliant yeah a lot of romantic tracks on the record Cape Pena was a cool way to kind of step out do something you don't usually do mm -hmm. so how was the Portuguese experience for you you know you told me earlier you know it might be tough to keep up with Harlem yeah. who is the featured vocalist on there but I actually took Portuguese for a year or two Damn, in, really? in college yeah so I but I, I did like the bossa nova element of that shit a lot. Yeah, I um, think Brazilian has been one of my biggest influences. Mm. In like seventh grade, they had us play Carnival and I auditioned for drums and I got to do like, just learn the basic bossa nova rhythms and it's never really left me. Um, and I listened to so much Gal Costa making mm. this album. Um, so it just, you know, she passed away, RIP the GOAT and I love Harlem's music so much, and she yeah. felt like the best person to hit up and be like, yo, you trying to pay a little respect? And yeah, she is, she's scary, bro. She's too good. <laughs> like way, 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 way too good at everything she does. So shout out Harlem. Do you feel you're often intimidated by collaborators? And is that a good thing? No, honestly, no. no. <laughs> she's very... That's yeah. a unique experience. Yeah, cause she's in like my top five vocalists, producers. Yeah, she's a top five. You know what I mean? Who else is in the top five? Ooh, Katia Bonet, mm. one of my favorite musicians alive. Obviously, Frank Ocean. Taste. Are we just talking singers? Yeah, I think singers. Let me do now. singers. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say Astrid Gilberto, RIP. Mm. I'm going to say Leticia Sadier from Stereo Lab. Oh, okay. And, and Harlem, that'd be five. In Harlem, we make it five. So yeah, that's my top five. Also, Some nice voices. also Napalm. Napalm is, is amazing. Is tied with somebody. Yeah, she's she's yeah. got to be up there. Yeah. I'm I'm a very big fan of Baby Rose's vocals. Mm, stylings. Crazy. Super crazy. Yeah. So Fish, when you sent me the SoundCloud link, you know this had said release date, you know summer 2022. There have been a lot of revisions, you know, do you consider yourself a creative perfectionist? And on that note, when getting Fool's Gold involved, did that help in terms of like, oh, actually setting out concrete dates and times, you know, to give you that structure? Yeah, I really wanted this on on a label and I, I waited until we can make that happen. And um, I'm grateful it did, yeah. So I just wanted to, ooh. Almost lost Matthew. Oh. I really love this album. It feels very clean. It feels very warm, and I just wanted it to hit as many people as I could. You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, perfectionist. 
93% of the time, but sometimes the deadline is in an hour and you got to yeah. yeah. get it right. But push the deadline back. <laughs> I feel like I'll, I'll listen to it infinitely until it's out. And then it yeah. feels like I'm dropping my kid off at like boarding school. And I'm like, you got it. We'll call and talk, but like, you got it now. I where's uh, Where's Matthew going to school? He got any offers? He going, he going D1? He's got a school of fish. He calls his closest friends. Uh, Kevin, Clydesdale, Clyborn. Clydesdale. Keen. <laughs> Julio. Like, I kind of hate this dude most days. I'm not going to lie to wow. you. Like, I was trying to be nice for the camera, but I don't fuck with Matthew right mm. now. I feel like he's he's been quite transgressive recently in his actions and his words, and we're going to have a talk about that later. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hard love, tough I, love. You, love is love is difficult sometimes, and isn't isn't that the lesson of fish in a way? Yeah. You know, love is blinding. What? Fi okay, okay. Did you catch anything yet? Did I? Oh, I saw bro, a bite. You saw a bite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no way. You know, there's a little, there's a little, there's some bubbling down there. What do the bubbles mean? No. At the end of the day. You mentioned to me earlier that some of these tracks were initially written for somebody else. Yeah, I wrote, okay, so the, the final video is for this song called Remember. It's the oldest song right here. That's actually from 2017 type shit. And I wrote that for Rihanna. And I sent it to her A&R. He really liked it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Tunji. But then I guess she just like. Tun is, that, is that the Def Jam dude? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, I guess she just like quit music. So <laughs> Oz were low to begin with, but we tried. And now I'm singing it. Yeah. You know, I, for, for Frank Leone to be singing a, a, a an initially a Rihanna song is, is fascinating to me. Yeah. Is there, is there anybody else you wanted to place it with? Or are you just like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna keep this one. I really didn't want to put it on the album. And then mm -hmm. everyone was like, this, this is my favorite thing. And I'm like, mm. I think part of me, you know, as a musician, I think sometimes the things you make don't hit you the way they do other people because of just whatever pretext went into it. Oh, definitely. But, um, no, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Stepped up to the plate. Yeah. It was, uh, I was just thinking about that on account of like Bryson Tiller, when he dropped Don't, there was just that complex interview where he was talking about how he almost took the song down because his friends, they were liking the song, but they weren't like showing it, you know, so he just thought it was whack. Mm -hmm. And so he was ready to take it off. And then, you know, I guess something, something intervened, you know, he decided to keep it up. And then, I mean, that basically shaped his career. So you just got Rihanna's a &R on your phone. Is that how, that's how this goes? I don't know, bro. Everybody has a phone number. You just got to find it. Everyone has her phone number, her personal. Yeah, no, I, no, um, yeah, it is what it is, you know what I mean? There'll be more. I definitely want to, like, that was, like, a big thing with this album was hopefully yeah. proving to some of the people I look up to that, you know, I could write for them. So when you are doing songwriting, in terms of getting in the mood to kind of be someone else, almost, mm. you know, how does that differ from your own process? Yo, that's interesting. So, like, Pharrell, I feel like, he said in an interview one time, he feels like the best songwriter when he's writing for someone other than himself. Mm. And I think there is a lot of freedom there. And I also really believe in like beginner's luck. Huh. Like I feel like when I try something new for the first time, there is a spark to be utilized there that might not be there the second time. But that might just be my ADHD. But like the thing I don't ever want to be is someone yeah. that only listens to themselves. Yeah. As a musician, I don't, I actually don't think that's helpful at all. But when you're working on something, you got to listen to it a million times. So. That's the whole thing of like practice makes perfect. You know, yeah. if you keep practicing and you only got yourself as a reference, then mm -hmm. what are you even kind of aspiring to, I guess? Yeah. But some people I love do that. So yeah. shout out to y'all. Keep, yeah. keep listening to yourself. Tell me about where you made this project. You know, was that, was it of a place of significance? You know, one place, many places. Was it here? Oh man. Yeah. I basically made Don't, Sun Job, and Fish at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, all of that music I was just putting where it's supposed to go. But that place sucked. That I was in the valley living with two of the most, like, just the, just the angriest, most miserable couple 
I have ever encountered in my entire life. There were like all of these like abused animals like limping around the house. Oh, God. And they would come home from work and just like scream at each other. And there was a dude living in the room next to me that would shave in the bathtub and then use my washcloth as a drain stopper. Oh. It was crazy because it was like the most beautiful place I'd ever lived. Like the valley is gorgeous. There's like yeah, peacocks yeah. walking down the street, citrus trees, mountains and all that, you know. There's but, more to the story. Oh my God, that was the worst fucking place I've ever been in my entire life. I'll never go back. I left in the middle of the night at like 3 a.m., caught a $40 flight back to Chicago. I was like, fuck that. When was that? That was 2019. 2019, so that's when you made your way back to the city. I came back, yeah, so I'd like, so low-key, I sold this little TV pilot that's like mm -hmm. what Huffing Paint is based on, kind of that story in my life, and we waited like 10 months for the contract to clear, so I was like, fuck this shit, I'm moving back. And then two days after I got back to Chicago, the deal cleared, but then COVID hit, so I was like, yeah, I'll be over here. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Posted back up. I mean, you you got family nearby. Yeah, yeah, downstate, but they're here, which right. is cool. And same time and... zone, same state. Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. We like to keep it that way. Who are some Chicago artists we should keep an eye on right now? Ooh. I love Samir Truth. I love Kai. Mm. I love Family Junket is one of my favorite bands working yeah. right now. They're amazing. I love Sparkle Mommy. She's going super crazy right now. Oh, I never heard of her. Amazing, amazing musician. Like jazz, soul, Latin music. I don't, I don't even, I don't want to explain it. Like you just, just go look up Sparkle Mommy. Hard, easy, hard as fuck. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the good. That's, that's a good. And Mansa, shout out to them and me playing a show together. Boom. Cool. Will be cool. Dorian's is this lovely vinyl bar. Live band come in. Tell me a little bit about what people can expect at the show in Chicago, and then we'll we'll get into uh, you know future dates, uh, Eastern Standard Time. You know. Yeah. Expect seasoning. Mm. Expect understanding, pain and relief from that pain, congestion. It's gonna be sold out. <laughs> <laughs> Congestion, okay. Yeah. Not a uh, not like nasally sinusy or hey, whatever you into. It's not you know. It's not up to me to say, but yeah, I think you would expect retribution, resolution, mm. levitation. Oh, that's a good one. Transcendental meditation. I'm getting a little rapidy rap now. <laughs> Fuck. Tell me the last time you were at the Big Apple. Damn. I just voiced a Gatorade commercial mm. in like 2015 and got a little bread off that. Okay. And I was like, I had this big plan for this album that eventually turned into a TV pilot that I hope will eventually end up on your screen. And I was gonna go up there and ask this dude to manage me. And I had a big plan and he was, doing a lot of big things at the time. And the moment I landed, he was like, yo, my girl's in the hospital. I'm gonna be here all week. Sorry, bro. Which is tough. But then I randomly met Kalani on the street and she was really cool. And then I wrote one of my favorite songs on the plane mm. back. So I guess I needed that. 2015, the last time you were there? Yeah, way too long. I guess I can only say I love the idea of New York, but yeah. I'm excited to make that. Make that move. <laughs> what else? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes the simplest words are the words that get you there. You got to pick those sometimes. You do. You do. Yeah. What's, uh, what's a favorite lyric of yours on the project? Of mine? Yeah. Is... On, on fish. Uh, fuck. Let me think. It's some horny bars I'm pretty proud of. Mm. I don't know if I, hmm. No, I'm gonna say the last lyric on the whole album. It says, time wiped away my dumb little prongs. I like that one. Prongs, oh, like a, mm. like a tong, or, or no, but a prong. More like a talon. I don't know, maybe ah. I fucked it up. No, I, I was thinking prawns, like shrimp. Oh yeah. Fish. Got no shrimps on me. 
what's your what's your favorite type of fish? You know, do you like to eat fish? Do you like to go to? Have you been to the aquarium? Yeah. Go to shed. You know. Damn. All right. To eat, it feels kind of fucked up with Matthew here. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. I know. Cover. You're in cover his ears. Oh man. I'm a simple man. Shrimp takes me very far. Yeah, okay. Um. That's, that's not his species. You know? No. He might eat shrimp too. Is he a bluefin tuna or what is he? He's like a. I th these jowls are making me think. You know, kind of catfish. Oh yeah. You know, I used catfish. to catch these. The only like the main time I ever really fished mm -hmm. was when I was a kid with my yeah. grandpa. He had a little pond and we would catch these and they smelled like shit and they eat <laughs> dirt all day. So I never wanted to try it. No, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like the answer is, is shrimp, but yeah. I made poke recently with like sashimi grade shit, and I was really nervous, ah, and nice. it went it went really well. So fuck yeah, Shark Tale, right? Have you seen this? You seen Shark Tale? Yeah. Favorite character in that film? Was Willem Dafoe in that? I'm not quite sure. I'm not. You know, there were it was an all star cast. It was an all star cast, but it was kind of like when Apple stole Xerox from Xerox before they dropped it on some Finding Nemo shit. So in my opinion, mm. I don't know. I'm going to just say Will Smith, he carried that. Yeah, Oscar. Oscar's yeah. never a bad answer. I'm, I'm partial to Ernie and Bernie the jellyfish. Oh, no, nah, it's them. It's them. I don't want any jellyfish coming for me. I fuck with y'all even when I don't understand it. Their lack of bones confuses you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do they, how do, they do it? You know, I never don't know. know. I want to have one in my mm -hmm. living room one day on like a giant column where he's like really comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But mad menacing you to just, everyone. Just post it up. Fuck Everybody's a guard like, dog. What are you talking about? Guard jellyfish. Are you kidding me? Press a button. The glass explodes. He gets on oh. your face. He's <laughs> oh. sucking out multiple organs out of your face before you even know what's going on. That's what the that's what the jellyfish do. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot I don't know about these creatures. Bro, they're scary as hell. It don't, seems. Don't talk crazy. It's like AI. Yeah, yeah. Jellyfish have been around long before AI. Mm. So, like, mm. you got to think. The jellyfish might outsmart AI. It's not even that, bro. They've been putting up with a lot over the years in terms yeah, of discourse. Yeah. Resilience. And, a discourse. And motor propellers and things yeah. like that. I would be gearing up for a revolution right mm. now. Mm. Free the guys. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Does it feel good to be surrounded by water to yes, you? you know? Yes, bro. I love being in the water. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I was like a public pool kid. So like mm -hmm. every summer, June to August, my mom was like, get out. I need to teach this class online. I don't even know how to upload photos from my phone to my computer. So like, you have to go. She was a teacher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I was running around doing little flips. Yeah, yeah. Getting sunburned real mm -hmm. bad. Developing deep cancer cells in my body. like. It's no, really kind of for them basal cells. What was that? No, that's like a type of. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> that's a type of type of skin skin issue. I don't I know believe. her. I don't know her. Basil. Keep her away from me. Yeah. Thank you. Keep some distance. Yeah, please. <laughs> well, would you go with your friends to the pool, or is it just kind of a solo journey? No, you roll up. Everybody's there. No, okay. Yeah. So you're, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, you might homies, not text them before. I didn't have a phone until I was in like high school. So yeah. High school. Yeah. yeah so this is like fifth grade shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually a nice swimmer. Like, my form's okay, pretty okay, bad right yeah. now, but if I were to be good at a sport, I think that's the one I could take. Here's here's some bait far. for the internet. What's your favorite stroke? <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> backstroke. Backstroke, yeah. Gotta go from the back sometimes, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna check the line real quick. You mind you mind holding this? You want to? Yeah. All right, man, you know what? Fuck it. This, this actually, what? there's not even a hook on here. All right, I had to, I know, I, I, I lied. I lied. I said, I said we were gonna go out, we go fishing, right? I didn't bring a hook. This doesn't even, this, this rod, you know? This is, this is in pieces right now. This isn't even attached. I, I feel so bad, but I had to tell Why are you doing this to me? This isn't even a real fish. Like, I, do you God, see, thought, you know, you know this, I mean, you see, it's not even a real fish. It's not even a real fish. I mean, bro, I didn't come here to be played you know, with this today. Is, this is sort of like a, I was trying to Truman show you, man. That's it, I, that's it. That's what this has all been about. What? But uh, I, look, that was a great film. And uh, he left the fish. <sighs> Frank Leone, fish tour, May 8th in Chicago, May 11th in New York. You know, I hope he shows up. Man, my ass is wet right now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and scene.